So we are embarking on part 32 of the theory and practice of hydrotherapy, a series on looking at the, the history and use of hydrotherapy in various health situations. And as always, uh, just as you navigate any health challenge, make sure you're partnering with a, with a, a medical practitioner that shares your philosophy of care of the human body both in health and in disease. Uh, the things we talk about here are just more tools that you can put in your toolbox of ways to take care of yourself and help others <clears throat> around you. Anything that you are uh, come in contact with that uh, suggested or, or ideas, make sure you check them out uh, completely for yourself, uh, doing your own due diligence and not just blindly accepting them as, as fact. Thomas Edison said in 1903 that the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will instruct his patient in the care of the human frame and diet and the cause and prevention of disease. <clears throat> Seems like those things have pretty much non come to fruition in the general sense of things. <clears throat> not, uh, not instructing care of the human frame or very little background in diet and uh, cause and prevention is almost... Absent, it's mostly focused on the prescription of medication to treat and mitigate symptoms, <clears throat> as opposed to searching for the causes, the underlying basis of those. But it was a very forward thinking statement, and there are some practitioners who utilize those modalities. And even before that, it was stated in 1885 that there are many ways of practicing the healing art. But there's only one way that heaven approves, and those are God's remedies, uh, the simple agencies of nature that won't tax or debilitate the system through their powerful properties. And those are pure air and water, cleanliness, a proper diet, purity of life, and a firm trust in God. Sometimes these are referred to as, by the acronym New Start. <clears throat> these are remedies uh, for the want of which thousands are dying, uh, yet they are going out of date just simply because they require skill and work that people are not accustomed to putting into to apply them. So fresh air, exercise, pure water, clean, sweet premises are within the reach of all with but little expense. Drugs are expensive, both in their cost and the effect on the system. <clears throat> and then way back in Bible times, 3 John 1 verse 2, uh, it says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. We know there's a, a big mind-body connection in health too. And if there's something that's vexing our soul or there's a huge guilt complex of some nature, uh, <clears throat> it can have debilitating effects on the body physiologically and uh, or anger, things like that. Uh, so those are things that, that God can help us with. <clears throat> In Romans, Paul states, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. <laughs> And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. <clears throat> so we want to be, be wise and submit our lives to God so that we don't conform to the ways of the world and the thought processes that, that go through it and motivate it, but be transformed by the renewing spirit of God. <clears throat> The Ministry of Healing, uh, a book that talks about the healing uh, power of God and the things that he provided in nature, the knowledge of man, that man is to be a temple for God, a habitation for the revealing of his glory should be the highest incentive to the care and development of our physical powers. Fearfully and wonderfully has the creator wrought in the human frame, and he bids us make it our study, understand its needs, and act our part in preserving it from harm and defilement. <laughs> In fact, there's a text that says, he who defiles the, the temple of God will be destroyed. Uh, <clears throat> so we want to make sure that we take care of and not defile our, our, our bodies. So we're going to continue here uh, kind of in, in an overview kind of fashion of various conditions and potential hydrotherapy approaches to use for them. <clears throat> We've gone through their specific modalities and usages in the preceding uh, presentations, but this is kind of a, a review of those things. So we're looking at those conditions and some hydrotherapy approaches. So bruising, <clears throat> uh, ice pack or crevasse uh, does basically causes vasoconstriction <clears throat> 
and it can help reduce the bleeding from a, an impact. Uh, you could also, after the initial <clears throat> initial vasoconstriction and, and bruising prevention, you could use some contrast therapy just to move blood in and out and help to accelerate the, the healing process by bringing nutrients and taking away wastes and toxins. But initially, uh, you want to just use the ice pack <clears throat> for uh, mitigating bruising issues. Coughing, you can use a, a vapor inhalation. It is very helpful. So there's a, a, a tent here as a towel over a, a, a bowl of hot water that's steaming off. You can use a variety of different things in it. <clears throat> this person's using some citrus. You can use cedar, uh, eucalyptus, Vicks Vapor Rub, uh, wintergreen, mint, a variety of different uh, uh, vapors <clears throat> that can help with coughing and just general congestion. Croup, so croup is kind of just a persistent cough, a heating chest compress or pack can help with that. This is the basic <clears throat> cloth wrapping of a heating compress around a torso. Notice it includes the neck, crisscrosses across the chest and around the abdo abdominal area. You wanna make sure that you avoid air pockets and spaces. Just have it nice and, and snug against the body. Um, this would not be dripping wet, it would just be moist <clears throat> and wrapped around and it would be tailored to uh, that particular application. <clears throat> Chronic diarrhea can sometimes be benefited by a neutral hot tub bath <clears throat> or a neutral tub bath. Um, edema, essentially swelling due to fluid retention, uh, abnormally working or functioning. Uh, lymphatic system can be one aspect of that. There can be other, uh, other causes as well. <clears throat> Depending on where that edema take pla takes place, a chest or abdominal, uh, you can use an alternate compress that's going to be hot and cold. Uh, legs, a contrast bath can be helpful for, for that. So that's going to be uh, vasoconstricting, vasodilating, aiding the flow. So the water therapy treatment functions as another heart, essentially. Our heart does the main circulatory <clears throat> movements of the blood through the body. But by creating a vasoconstriction, vasodilation sequence, we can use water therapy as a heart too. That's regionally specific. Uh, painful uh, Edema in some limbs, a continual hot shower can be therapeutic in that. Basically, it's vasodilating and help to, helping to move the, the fluid around. So again, we've gone into details on these various treatments in previous uh, episodes. So rashes from drug reactions, a soda alkaline bath. So using baking soda in a bath can help to reduce uh, drug rash reactions. Dysmenorrhea, so essentially it's painful premenstrual syndrome, a PMS, a very hot sits bath can be helpful for that. Um, eclampsia is another uh, thing that can be helpful, helped with a full hot blanket pack. So this is typically postpartum. Um, also an ice cravat can help with that. And we're looking at blood pressures here in this, this table here, pre-eclampsia, pre blood pressure will be 90 to, to 109, Distolic blood, dystolic blood pressure, that's the D plus protein, protein urea, that's protein in the urine. Uh, <clears throat> and then uh, severe preeclampsia and then, and then eclampsia. Uh, <clears throat> and and uh, that can have some devastating effects there. We have convulsions and unconsciousness as a potential outcome with that. Some danger signs, headache, blurred vision, upper abdominal pain. So using the ice and the also the full hot blanket uh, pack can be helpful in, in warding that off. Eczema, which is a severe skin rash, um, a soda alkaline bath can be helpful with that in much the same way as the, the drug reaction and rash uh, scenario we just took, spoke about. <clears throat> Inflammation of the eustachian tubes. So the eustachian tube is, if you look in the diagram, you have your outer ear, you come to the middle ear, the tympanic membrane, the eardrum is what's separating the inner ear from the outer ear. And as you come in, you go through a, a bony area, <clears throat> a cartilaginous junction there. And then you are <clears throat> actually on the inside of the tympanic membrane is essentially the eustachian tube and it leads all the way into the nasopharynx. So when you swallow, you uh, change the pressure going up through the, the ear canal, and, <clears throat> which is the outer ear and the eustachian tube. If there is congestion, uh, that can cause have blockages that are caused, and that can be painful with pressure changes. So that can be either increased pressure due to water, as in scuba diving, uh, or the lack of pressure going over a mountain pass or flying. 
<clears throat> those can be painful situations. So a throat compress can be beneficial for that. It's about the nearest application you can do. You could also do an onion poultice to the ear, uh, put some a warm onion, uh, onion extract into the ear canal could be helpful. Um, but the throat compress that's wet and then allowed to uh, increase the circulation in that area is a good hydrotherapy treatment. Painful eyes. So revulsive compress can be helpful. So revulsive is just a rapid hot and cold application uh, that can be helpful. Again, that's pumping the circulation, the, the blood through the area. Uh, weak pronated feet, <clears throat> a contrast bath can be helpful for that. So pronation basically, basically is just talking about the direction that the foot uh, tends to go naturally. You can see that straight ahead is a normal, the normal uh, trajectory of the, the foot projection. Pronation is where the, the foot tends to splay out. Supination is where it tends to uh, point in. Uh, extreme supination would be referred to as pigeon toed. <clears throat> uh, sometimes you'll see people walking down the street just with their, their feet like splayed out. It's highly pronated. And uh, that's just is not a, it's not a healthful gait. <clears throat> And there's a number of different things that can play into that. But one thing that can help with that is a contrast contrast bath. So fever, uh, fever control. We've talked about fevers in the past, but you can use cold compress or ice crevasse for, for fever control. A high fever is a dangerous thing. You can see on this particular thermometer, 106.8, that's definitely the danger zone. Uh, but you wanna reduce fevers when they're getting at 101 around that area, they should be, they should be managed. Um, Fever is a part of our body's natural mechanisms for defending itself against illness and pathogens by killing out the pathogen. Our body can maintain <clears throat> itself to a, a high level with temperatures, but it also is sensitive uh, to it as well, the tissues. So a graduated bath, a sponge bath for basic fever reduction. In children, a sweating wet sheet pack can be helpful for that. An extended fever, a cooling wet sheet pack so basically uh, wrapping a cool, a cool, damp, wet sheet around the individual and wrapping them in it, their body will quickly warm that up, um, but that evaporative cooling will help to lower the body temperature. Lowering of a high fever, 104 plus, a cooling uh, wet sheet pack, again, is also used for that application. And you can also do a neutral bath or a cooler bath too. Uh, some of these other ones you're gonna have, uh, Sometimes fever and chills kind of go together. Uh, and so you want to kind of ascertain that because you don't want to chill a patient either, but they could be feel chilled, but have a high, high fever presentation. Gallstones. So gallstones essentially are crystals of cholesterol that are found in the gallbladder, which is an accessory organ to the liver. And you see that little tube just to the left there, that is the, the bile duct, common bile duct. And those gallstones can be benefited and reduce their activity through a contrast bath. So again, that's hot and cold. Most people have, especially Western diet, have gallstones of one nature or another. Most are asymptomatic. Once in a while, they'll flare up. They tend to flare up when gall or bile is being um, called for in the body. And that is called for in the body when there is a high load of fat that has been ingested. So if you're not ingesting much fat, you're not going to be calling for much bile and any symptomatic, asymptomatic gallstones that'll be there will just quietly lie and rest there. But as soon as you call it to action, there's a chance that those gallstones could get caught. So that can be actually a little barometer to you. If you start having gall pain, that means, hip, I've gone over the fat threshold. I shouldn't have been eating that much fat and just stick to a low fat. Uh, diet. You get plenty of fat because all cell membranes, plant or animal, have uh, fat in them. And a uh, totally plant-based diet, completely plant uh, originated, is going to have plenty of plenty of good uh, fats in the right ratio already present in it. <clears throat> Gout, which is typically caused by uric acid crystals that are causing pain in a joint in which they're residing. And those uh, typically are from, a, from an animal-based diet, uh, but paraffin baths can help mitigate those, those gout pains, uh, a steam bath, sweating wet sheet pack. 
So there's a person sitting in a, in a wet in a steam bath here. It's a personal sauna essentially. You can do that to some extent with towels draped over you, uh, <clears throat> over a chair with a hot steam, steaming pot of water underneath you. You can create a, a miniature steam bath that way too, but this is a cabinet style and that can be helpful in reducing gout symptoms. Gangrene, essentially gangrene sets in when tissue has become necrotic or dies due to something like extreme frostbite or a wound that has become infected and then the tissue starts to, to die around it. <clears throat> so a contrast bath is going to be a good way to work with that. <clears throat> that can also good for blood poisoning and things like of that nature. Essentially, it's increasing the circulation, again, vasoconstricting, vasodilating, moving the, the blood that is able to get there in and out way into bringing nutrients, removing toxins, and that would need to be done <clears throat> routinely and often to help to stave off uh, progressing with gangrene. Headache. So there's different types of, of headaches. Uh, anemia, which is basically iron poor, uh, blood, uh, <clears throat> And that can be oxygen deficits too. So a contrast hydrotherapy to the head. Congestive, you can use a cold compress, an ice cravat, or a, a contrast bath. Also, sometimes a congestive headache is very beneficial to have a hot contrast to the head, hot and cold. Helps to break up the, the congestion that is, is in the head, in the um, sinuses, essentially. So a sinus is basically just an open space. We think of our nasal sinuses where the mucus is congested in the in the nasal nares, the na but we have passages in our bone, in our forehead, and our skull that are also referred to as sinuses because they are gaps. <clears throat> and there are very tiny holes that allow the air to equalize with changes in pressure. But if those are clogged with mucus, as is in a sinus headache or, or a sinus congestive type of an activity or pathogenic process, then uh, that headache could uh, flare up because the air isn't able to equalize inside. A hot foot bath can also be helpful, very helpful for, for headache reduction. Basically, it's drawing the circulation, the blood to the feet and away from the head. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, again, sets up that, that, that circulation pathway more fully and completely. So again, improving head circulation, <clears throat> just in general, if you're feeling like brain fog and things like that, um, alternate hot, cold to the head. Uh, you have passive congestion, uh, alternate hot and cold to the head again. Um, if you have rash, whether it's uh, heat rash or hives, a soda alkaline bath can be helpful. So basically just a neutral bath or a warm bath with baking soda in it. Uh, essentially that neutralizes <clears throat> and uh, takes the body from an acidic state to a more neutral and alkaline state, which is a more healthful state of being. Those who eat a high plant-based diet, an exclusively plant-based diet, are going to have a more alkaline tending body. People who are experiencing disease processes, cancers, and things like that typically have a, uh, <clears throat> a lower pH or a more acidic state that they are experiencing in their body overall. And that comes for the proteins that come from animal products, milk, dairy, eggs, meat, uh, all those kinds of things that come from animals <clears throat> that have cholesterol associated with them and tissue. A hoarse voice can uh, be mitigated through the use of a throat compress. So we can see both a shoulder and a throat compress demonstrated in the, the graphic on the right. <clears throat> a sock around the throat uh, covering a a wet rag uh, will function very well as a throat compress. And that same strategy can be used around a joint, like the elbow that showed here. Atonic indigestion. So basically that's the um, non-moving uh, stomach and abdominal bandage, bandage can be helpful with, uh, with various temperatures of water. Infections. Contrast bath. So here we have someone's hand going into an ice bath and a, <clears throat> a cool bath or a warm bath. So back and forth. Uh, it, it's good for localized infections like an infected uh, cut or something like that, even things like blood poisoning. Uh, just put, putting that uh, limb in and out of, of uh, hot and cold water 
back and forth. The maximum amount of time is uh, three three rotations. Uh, you can put it in for like three minutes and then 30 seconds cold, three minutes hot, 30 seconds cold, and do that for three rotations. Uh, take a break, and then you can come back and do that again. Over three rotations and you tend to diminish the effect. Um, you can also do a whole systemic infection mitigation through uh, contrast showers. <clears throat> Inflammation, an ice bag or a compress, uh, i.e. Like a, like a throat compress. Whatever part happens to be inflamed, redness is usually a sign of inflammation. Heat is also a sign of inflammation. Pain is also a sign of inflammation. So those <clears throat> ice bag or, or compresses can be helpful to mitigate those. Influenza, particularly the respiratory varieties, a heat heating chest pack can be helpful or a sweating wet sheet pack to help to uh, reduce the symptoms of influenza. Uh, insanity can use a neutral tub bath. We've talked about that in the past, uh, or mania. Uh, bites and stings, a poultice uh, uh, from the soda alkaline bath can also be helpful. So there's a wasp sting, just take some baking soda, make a paste out of it and paint it on. Uh, if you were stung by a lot of wasps or hornets or the like, stinging insects, a bath would be the approach, a very thick alkaline, soda alkaline bath, because you wouldn't be able to treat all those different areas adequately without uh, totally immersing the person. Uh, they can be, that can be devastating. <clears throat> Sometimes kids get a little over, over eager about a wasp nest and, and uh, cause significant, significant trauma to themselves by rattling up a, a wasp nest. <clears throat> So this is a good thing to remember. Insomnia, that's trouble sleeping, an abdominal bandage. So part of it is the, <clears throat> is the water and the temperature, the neutralness, but also the wrap itself can be helpful. So the neutral wet sheet pack can also be beneficial. A baby uh, feels tight and uh, just comforted by a tight wrap. Not super, super tight, but just a very snug wrap. And that's likewise for someone who may be suffering from insomnia. A neutral tub bath can also put someone in a position to fall asleep more, more easily. Intestinal pain. So that can come in a variety of different places. In the abdominal area, a hot trunk pack can be beneficial. So you can use uh, like a fomentation that's been wrapped on. We talked about the hot trunk pack earlier. <clears throat> and uh, that can be helpful. Again, itching, soda alkaline bath using the baking soda. Painful joints, you can use a joint compress, an ice pack, or uh, a paraffin bath, particularly for like various types of arthritis. So this is basically just a warming tray that's able to liquefy paraffin. When you dip your hand into it, it coats it and it maintains the heat for a longer period of time than just dipping it into the water and pulling it out. So it retains the higher heat capacity than water. Various kidney issues can also be benefited through hydrotherapy. Uh, congestion, so hot packs with ice bags. Again, you're setting up your mini pump, helping the movement of the blood flow through the kidney. Congestion, again, is basically the sl slowing down of flow. <clears throat> so whether that be traffic on the road or the blood in your blood vessels or uh, whatever else is moving that has come to a stop. Uh, insufficiency and congestion, a full hot blanket pack. That would be more... Uh, systemic treatment as opposed to localized. If you have kidney pain, you can do a hot trunk pack. Uh, again, that's going to be more localized. Kidney stones, uh, a kidney stone pack, <clears throat> which is specifically designed to address the, the stones. And the pain, a full blanket hot pack can help mitigate that. Uh, laryngitis, uh, throat compress, again, is helpful in, in uh, soothing that. Torn ligaments, an ice pack. So we can see a picture here of someone uh, supining their, twisting their ankle, rolling it really severely, causing some tears in the, the tendons and the, the ligaments actually. Ligaments are bone to bone, tendons are muscle to bone, uh, but these have, have torn severe pain. So the, the ice pack can aid the, the pain as well as lowering inflammation. It's not gonna repair it, but it will help the, the uh, especially later on after, after the initial swelling 
contrast effects could help with uh, uh, just the blood flow increased, increasing through the area, taking away the byproducts of the, of the damage and then bringing in new blood and nutrients to help repair the tissue. Um, so they are not well vascularized tissues. So if there's any way that you can increase the circulation to that, um, that that's beneficial. An anemic liver, an abdominal bandage can be helpful. Um, refractory lumbago, such as that's back pain, a continuous hot shower can be helpful. Uh, mania, a neutral wet sheet pack or neutral hot tub. That's the same thing as you would do with, with uh, uh, insanity, so a neutral tub bath. Uh, mastoiditis, um, hot pack with ice bags. So you can see this child here has mastoiditis uh, inflamed right behind the, the ear. There's been a, that joint is inflamed significantly. Meningitis, that's an inflammation of the meninges or the membranes that surround the brain. We have three different meninges. <clears throat> we have the uh, arachnoid mater, the dura mater, and the pia mater. Uh, this essentially means membranes. There's, the, there's a tough one, there's a spider like one, and there's a gentle one. To be aware of new videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to the Preparing for the Time of Trouble channel. For more free videos and downloadable audio podcasts, as well as handouts, go to www.preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com. Topic categories include recordings of live seminar presentations, country living, sustainable gardening, homestead remedies, how to be self-sufficient when the grid goes down, wild edible and medicinal plants, hydrotherapy, and end-time Bible prophecies. To take advantage of these free resources, go to preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com.